And a lot of times, I will actually use my finger to, to blot things around. Okay, while I have this darker color mixed, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start to shape the lemon a little bit more, the shadows on the lemon. And you'll notice then that we'll, we'll start to um, actually see how that shadow is created. Okay. Um, and it's not easy. Don't, don't beat yourself up when you think about, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, blah, blah, blah. You know, don't worry about it. It is not easy to learn how the water and the pigment work together and how your paper absorbs paint. So this is all experimental. So what you want to do is you want to have fun with it. You want to say, okay, this is all a learning experience and you're process is just seeing how all of this works together in an amazing way. So have fun with it. Don't worry about um, creating a perfect painting. Um, learn your materials and know that um, a perfect painting will come, but it may come, you know, two or three or four or four hundred paintings later. But don't worry about it. You just have fun with it. Now you'll notice I keep going back with clean water on a brush and moving the, um, moving the pigment around. It's very important that you, um, that you keep your edges soft and the way to do it is to have clean water on the brush and to um, and to move, you know, make, make a soft edge by just going next to the um, hard edge. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense to me. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my, this portion of my lemon because it's dry, okay? I want to now have an area I want to put that um, little edge of the rind in around it, and I want it to um, stand out. So all of this has to be pretty dry in order to, for that to happen. Now I'm using the edge of my brush, and I'm just going to create, that's, that may be a little too orange, let me see. All right. And I'm just kind of wiggling my the tip of my brush around. It's okay to have it be a little orangier, if that's a word, more orange, um, around the darker parts of the lemon so that it stands out a little bit more. Okay. And I want to start to get the texture of the lemon peel in here. So that is more little dabs. Okay, so I just want to start to put in some texture. And I'll do that by just going like this with my finger. Fingers work with watercolors. So that starts to build the rind, if you will. Okay. And my next step, once this dries very nicely, is I am going to um, put in some real good darks, okay? And that will kind of complete the picture, if you will. I'm using the um, Oriolan yellow, and I'm just putting a light, 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 light wash around this white area because it's not entirely white, but I'm just going to have it go like that. And then I'm going to add um, a little bit more. I want to um, 
make the segments show a little bit more. So let's do this. I want to um, put some elements in the segments which will make them stand out a little more. And that is, I'm using the um, purple that I had mixed, the violet that I had mixed, in with the uh, Oriolan and orange New Gamboge mixture. Okay. One thing with watercolor is you want to work around the whole watercolor all at the same time because if you um, get if you finish off one area and it's too dark you don't know I mean you want to make sure that you're painting the whole painting all at the um, finishing it off at the same time you don't want to go finish one area and then you know have it not work with the rest of your painting okay all right this is getting close I'm going to now mix um, quite a, a dark and I'm going to put that in and then that is hopefully that um, will complete our painting so let's see I want it nice and dark. I may have to wait a little bit on this so that it um, dries thoroughly because when you put your darks in um, you don't want them to bleed. You want to make sure that um, that you have a um, nice dry area to paint on. Okay. So that's good. I'm going to mix it in with my yellow to tone it down a little and make a more neutral shade because that is going to go on the dark area of the lemon. All right, this is going to this is going to be tricky. We're going to see how if this is dry enough. Okay. Have your tissue handy so you can stop that capillary action if your paper is not uh, quite dry enough. So you want to get the rim, and there's there's a reflection off of the bottom. It's, it's hard to remember to use an old brush to mix because once it's in your hand, I start painting with it, and sometimes I need the the, the better point of a fine brush of one that isn't quite so uh, beat up. Okay. All right. This is, um, you're better off if you uh, do allow your, your um, paper to absolutely dry up. But this is getting close. So I want to show you what it looks like now. So that's getting close. Still needs to be way darker underneath. And um, let's see if we can do that. 
without having it blend into um, the rest of the lemon. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. Get that shadow under there and make the lemon pop off a little bit. And the last thing that I would do is I'll go in and I will put in a little bit more texture on the lemon peel. Um, but it may be too it may be too damp to do that. Let me just see. Okay. So that's pretty close. There's, um, there are probably, um, I think the, the letting everything dry um, the paper letting it dry thoroughly is the um, is the biggest trick for this, but that gives you an idea of how to paint your your lemon still life. So I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. I'm going to let it sit now. And what I do with my paintings is after I have painted them, I prop them up around the house and I take a look and see if something needs to be added. Sometimes if you get far enough away from your painting, you'll say, oh yeah, that needs to be darker or that needs to be lighter. You can indeed lift off with clean water on a brush, you can actually lift off um, paint in a watercolor. But I like to let things sit for a while to see what needs to change and if there's anything else that, um, that I would do differently um, for it. So that, that would be my recommendation is to live with it for a while and just see um, how it feels to you and if there are any modifications or changes that you may need to make to it later. Then all you have to do really is sign your name to it. So that's our first lesson on how to create a lemon still life.